Given an array, rotate the array to the right by k steps, where k is non-negative. How can you do that? That's about today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, this is Steve here. Today we're going through lead color problem 189, rotate array. Let's take a look at the problem first. Given an array, rotate the array to the right by k steps, where k is non-negative. Example 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and k is 3. The final output is 5, 6, 7, and then 1, 2, 3, because we rotate this array to the right by 3 steps. So first, rotate 1 step, it becomes 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because every single number moves towards the right by 1 step, and the very last number, the words on the very right end, moves towards the very beginning, right? So that's where 7 moves, becomes to 1's position. And then we continue to do this for the second step. And then everything like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 move towards the right. So the 6 becomes to 7's position, right? So we continue to do that for the third time. So all of these move towards the right and then 5 becomes the first position. That's how it ends. And then we take a look at the second example, k equals to 2. That means we rotate this array to the right by two steps, rotate one step to the right. So first it becomes 99 becomes here. Minus 1 becomes the second, minus 100 becomes the third, 3 becomes the last, and I continue to do the list. This is a pretty easy problem. There are a few solutions to this problem. So number one solution is that we can basically brute force it. So what we do is that we'll have a nasty for loop and we'll rotate every single element towards the right one step at a time. So there are a total of, say, there are n elements, the length of the array is n, so the time complexity of that is going to be n times k, right? So let's write it down. Time complexity is going to be n times k because we rotate every single element out of the n elements towards the right one at a time and we'll do this k times. So the time complexity for this brute force, we'll call this brute force solution to be n times k, which is not super efficient. Actually, it's going to be rejected by lead code OJ. So, but the good thing is that for that, the space complexity is only 01. We're not using any extra space. So think about it, we only need one temp variable to hold the element that we're rotating towards the right, towards the right. We only need a temp variable, so the space complexity is just going to be 01. But the time com complexity is on times k, which is huge and cannot be accepted on OJ. So how can we improve, further optimize this solution? to make it accepted or to make it faster. One typical practice is that we can trade off space for time. So luckily here, space is 01, so we can use some extra space to lower the time complexity. So that leads us to the second solution, which is we can use an extra array, which means we can copy the entire original input array into the second array. So basically we put, we assign, we can pre-calculate every single element that should be rotated into its correct position as an extra array so that later on we can just basically copy the extra array into the original array so that every element in the original array is at its final rotated position how can we do that let's take a look at here so one two three four five six seven let's write it here Found to be 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Length is 7, and k is 3. Then how do we know where is the final correct position for every single number? Let's just take a, take a look at this first example. We start from the very left towards the very right, so I start from 0. So for this one, we know the final correct answer should be 5, 6, 7. 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. This should be the, okay, let me make some space here. This should be the final correct position for every single number. Then let's figure out how we'll start from i equals to 0. i equals to 0 is this one. This one moves to which position? This one moves to 0, 1, 2, 3. This one becomes i equals to 3, right? This is how it becomes over there. Let's take a look at one more. This one becomes to where? One becomes to, this index is one. 
index one becomes to four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. This one becomes four. So I think we can already see the pattern. The pattern happens to be, it is I is this zero plus K, right? The difference is K. And also we need to do a modular, the length just in case. So if the I is, let's see, we'll continue to do that. Then we can guess it's going to be a five. We'll continue to do that, but let's see. When I becomes, say, six, at that point, I become six. Six plus three is going to give us nine. Of course, nine is exceeding the total length of this given array. Total length is only seven. At that point, what we commonly do is just, to, well, just apply the modular. That's going to put the this i into the correct position basically we finished we we reached the end of this array so we'll put that element back to the beginning its correct position so that's going to give us i plus k modular length that is six plus three modular seven that is going to give us nine modular seven that is going to be two so this i equals to six is seven seven is in this position zero one two which is correct right so and also this formula applies to all of this as well because when i plus k is smaller than then it's going just going to be the number i plus k itself right so i plus zero plus three is three three modular seven is still three so this is the formula that we can use to put every single element from the original input into its correct final position, which we're going to use a, tempor a temporary array to hold it. If that makes sense, we can put this algorithm into actual code. With that time, that's going to be, okay, let me just leave it over there and write brute force. That's the brute force solution. The actual solution that we're going to use is use extra array then time is going to be o n we only need to iterate through this given array only once space is going to be o n because we use some extra memory to lower the time complexity okay now let's do it it's then length, length we'll have another temp temporary copy of the array to hold the final position copy new length and then here so we just directly move every single element to its correct final position start from the very left what we'll do is the final position is something that we just saw is going to be i plus k modular length that's where every single number should be in its correct position right this is what we just did let's take a look back so we start from, this is the nums array. This is the nums array. We start from i equal to zero. Zero plus three is three, three modulus seven is three. So that means three should be put into, whoops, three should be put into this three position, which is right now it's standing at four, but we initialized a temp variable, which means every single element is zero that we don't need to worry about overwriting anything in any elements. We'll just put this one into its correct position, which is here, four, right? One is at this position. That's what we did. We'll continue to do that for every single element from zero to the last index. That's what this one is doing. And then after that, the copy, this temporary array is holding all of the elements in its final correct position. Then what we'll do is that we'll just assign everything back into the nums array without worrying about any values being overwritten. Int i smaller than n i plus plus. Next is nums i copy i. That's it. That's the that's the algorithm. Let's hit submit and see. All right, accept it. Um, as I said, the time complexity is O n, space complexity is O n as well because we initialized an extra array copy. That's it. 
the key here is that we need to figure out where is the final correct position. Very common technique is using a modular of the length of the array. That's the first accepted solution or the second possible solution. Then let's talk about one more solution. Is it possible to further optimize this, optimize this solution? Right now we're using on time and on space. Let's take a look at the problem description. There's a note here. Could you do it in place with only O1 extra space? So for sure it's possible. Let's take a further look at this, at this example here. Let's copy this here and move it over here. This is the input array. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, total of 7 elements. And the final, k equals to 3, length is 7. The final output position will rotate this array to the right by k steps. Let's take a further look. So let's deeply analyze this output. So we can actually cut this output into two parts. One is five, six, seven, which is from zero. That is from zero up to K minus one, right? Let's just look at the index. Index starting from zero, zero to K minus one. K is three, three minus one is two, zero, one, two. That is this part, right? We can actually break down the final output into two parts. Let's highlight that one in red. This is first part. The second part is the rest of this array, which is from k to length minus 1. k to length minus 1. This is the second part. Let's take a look here. Let's highlight that one in blue. If you can see here, these the, the two parts that I separated and highlighted in different colors, they are actually, both of them are sorted, right? So what we can do is that intuitively we can see we can flip these entire, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, into flip all of them into seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We can flip this entire array completely reversely first. This is the first reverse. Reverse one. We got this. Second, we can reverse because we see we broke down the final output array into two parts and every single part is in sorted order. So right now what we have is this, it's completely reversed. What we can do is that we'll do two more reverse or just one reverse, which is to reverse from here to here, the first part, and also reverse the second part. So let's see, reverse two, reverse two. What we'll do is we'll reverse the red part this red part will reverse it to be five, six, and seven, right? Keep this one intact. Three, two, one. This is the, uh, this is the, excuse me. This is the, after the second reverse, what we have done is that we've made this one to be in the correct final order, right? And also now let's take, a, take care of this, the second part. What we'll do is this part, we don't need to do anything about it, but then we'll need to reverse the second part, which after it's reverse is going to become one, two, three, four. Now let's take a look at here. This is the final correct answer, right? This is the correct answer. This is all in the correct position, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. So basically we do three reverses. First, we can reverse the entire given input array into its complete reverse order. And then we do two more reverses. One reverse is to reverse the first part up to k minus one. The second part is to reverse k to length minus one. That's it. And then that's going to be the correct final output answer. During this entire process, we're not using any extra memory, any extra space. So space complexity is still going to be O1, which is awesome. And the time complexity is also stays at On, right? Although, although we have three reverses, Every single one of them is just a one O N. This is part of O N. This is part of O N. So it's upper bounded by O N. So that's awesome. Time complexity is still O N while we reduced space complexity down to O one. That's basically the algorithm. And one more thing that we need to pay attention to is that we need to do a modular of K. So just in case, say here, in this case, K is three, which is smaller than the length, which is seven. But if say, k equals to 10, right? If k equals to 10, then from 0 to 
10 minus 1 is 9 from 0 to 9 which is going to get out of the array boundary which is wrong and and also we actually don't need to move 10 times we only need to move three times so 10 k equals to 10 and k equals to 3 or k equals to 17 they are all equivalent because all if if it's one time of the entire array length that means the this entire k steps we don't necessarily need to move right if we can keep adding seven so here three ten seventeen twenty four thirty one if they are exactly seven if they are exactly the length of the array apart say plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven all of these k steps we don't actually need to perform all that we need to perform is only this three right so all of this all of this equal to k modular length this is the actual k k steps that we need to perform which is three steps this k step should always be smaller than or equal to the array length it should actually always be smaller than length if it is exactly seven if it is exactly the length of of the array that means we don't need to perform any rotation right because that's basically the original input array that's it we're done so we only need to perform all of the rotation k steps k should always be smaller than the array length so with that said let's put that into actual code first we need to do a modular at the let's first put length since we're using length many times length k should be this and then we'll have th three reverse copy this one one is that we're going to reverse this entire array we'll implement this uh, we'll implement this reverse we'll implement this reverse helper function int nums int start int end next is what we'll have is this next as i said we'll rotate the first part which is from zero up to k minus one then we'll reverse the second part which is from k up to length minus one these are the three parts so here inside this helper function what we'll have is while start smaller than n we'll just keep swapping int temp nums start nums start nums end and assign temp to end and then we'll keep incrementing start and keep decrementing end yeah that's the algorithm um let's now let's hit submit and see submit accepted 100 so now let's analyze the time complexity as i just mentioned time complexity is still going to be o n and space complexity which is drastically improved from o n we were using an extra total total full length of an extra array to put the final position into the correct place that is o n extra space but now we're actually using only constant extra space which is only the temp that's O1 extra space. Time complexity is still ON because we traverse through this array. ON, right? Um, I hope um, this video helps you understand this problem and the solutions. If that's the case, do me a favor and drop a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tap the little bell notification as we continue to go through a lot of very classic interview questions to help people better prepare for coding interviews. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.